Here we are in the Biosphere 2 Tropical Forest. I'm Ty Taylor. I'm a PhD student at the University of Arizona, and I study how tropical forests will respond to climate change. If you take a tour at Biosphere 2, this is where you'll stand to look out over the tropical forest. Now, when you look out over a forest like this, it's easy to see little more than a green wall. But through my time and research here at Biosphere 2 and in Costa Rica and the Amazon, I found that there is so much more than a green wall here. Each of these species has a story. They're great stories, and not many people know them, so I'd like to share a few of those with you. This is an endangered species called Zamia fisheri, found only in a small region in Mexico and in botanical gardens like this one. It belongs to an ancient group of plants called cycads, which dominated forests when the dinosaurs walked the earth. Cycads evolved from a fern-like ancestor over 100 million years before the first flowers appeared on the planet, probably due to changing climates and the rising dominance of flowering plants. This once diverse group of plants is now diminished to just over a hundred species, many of which are nearly extinct in the wild, like this one. This is an important plant for Amazonian indigenous people. Its name is Psychotria viridis, and it's in the coffee family. The genus name, Psychotria, gives away a bit of its story. Plants in this genus contain psychoactive hallucinogenic compounds called tryptamines. But if you ate a leaf of this plant right now, it would do nothing for you. That's because we have an enzyme in our brain that breaks down tryptamines before they become psychoactive. Amazonian shamans, however, will mix together infusions of this plant with a vine called Banisteriopsis copy. This vine contains a compound that inhibits that enzyme allowing tryptamines to become psychoactive in the brain. This combination of plants makes up the well-known hallucinogen called ayahuasca. Amazonian shamans will take ayahuasca in order to communicate with plant spirits and learn their medicinal properties. This is one of my favorite methods of identifying plants. This one smells like candied ginger, so I can tell that it's in the ginger family. When identifying tropical trees, oftentimes the leaves are so high in the canopy that you can't even see them. So making a cut in the trunk and smelling it can give you a hint as to what the species is. Tropical plant smells are so diverse and interesting that it becomes addicting sniffing and describing them. I have smell descriptions in my field notes ranging from fried chicken to Kellogg's Fruit Loops. <laughs> Ugh, this one smells horrible. I can tell by its smell that it's in the genus Diffenbachia. In fact, it smells a lot like a javelina, which is interesting because in Costa Rica there are javelinas the same species we have here in Arizona, actually. And they love Diffenbachia. Their preferred species has a caustic sap that will badly burn your skin. But somehow, the iron gut of the javelina isn't bothered by that. This is a tree in the bean family called Clitoria racemosa. It puts out leaves higher than any other tree in this forest which is quite an accomplishment because the top of this greenhouse can be well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. This plant emits a gas from its leaves called isoprene, which helps the leaves to deal with heat stress. I'll be doing a survey in this forest soon to see if isoprene has played a role in the survival of these trees in this hot environment. This study will tell us a bit about how trees in natural tropical forests will respond to climate change.
This plant in the genus Cecropia loves sun and is one of the first to grow when a tree falls in the forest, creating a new light gap. With its enormous leaves and hollow stem, it can grow four meters or 13 feet a year. Some species have ants living inside the sim that pay their rent by attacking anything that tries to eat the leaves. Amazonian indigenous people burn these leaves and mix the ash with powdered coca leaves for a mild stimulant. This is an important habit for these people because coca leaves contain a high concentration of calcium, an essential nutrient which is hard to come by without the milk of livestock. Here we are, back at the beginning. I hope you've enjoyed these stories, and I hope the next time you look on a forest like this one, or even the weeds in your garden, you'll see more than just a green wall, and you'll wonder what many stories are written in the natural history of the leaves you see. This is an endangered species called Zamia fisheri. I'll get used to the camera in a minute, probably. <laughs> okay.